Welcome to another live session of the Porters Gate Online Broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips at Kintola. I want to welcome you especially this morning. This beautiful day, we're going to continue to seek the heart of the Father. We're going to continue to pray. We want to continue to track that which the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing in this new day. Heaven has been speaking to us from various uh, dimensions. Heaven has been speaking to us from various uh, um, perspectives. And um, I believe that many of us are really acting to that which the Spirit of the Lord is saying because uh, it is wise for us to continue to listen and allow the Lord to bring his word to us in a way that can really bring us to a position where we need to repent, we need to turn, we need to adjust, we need to do all that is required so that we, we can then become that, you know, a company of them that are representing the intentions of God for this new day. I think it's important that we continue to stand. A friend of mine, you know, uh, uh, Apostle Wilson Daniel this morning sent, uh, uh, normally he sent this uh, messages so early in the morning. So he sent a message this morning just close about f after four to five there about so he said he said oh uh, it's interesting to know that there are people that are awake at this you know time of the day well then i sent a message back to him i said well we are called to be watchmen we cannot afford a right to be to be sleeping when we are supposed to be the sound of a new day you know so so we 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 appreciate what the lord amen is doing in our midst and what the spirit of the lord amen has empowered us to continue to to stand for and to represent this is not you know a, a you know a ministry or an assignment that is uh, um in, you know that you know that is inviting because you will have to go on behalf of the people you will have to you know go the extra mile you will have to wake up at odd time you will have to you know do things you know in the in the opposite direction to which everybody accepts so this is the call. This is the ministry. Thank you, Sister Myrtle, for joining this morning. So once again, we are going to continue to you know, look into the Word of God and continue to pray. Like I said, prayer is very important all right, to the healing, to the transformation, to the development, to the deliverance of, of our personal life, our family, amen, and our community. Somebody must just go that extra mile. And I just felt all right, that as we start this morning that... Once again, I need to, you know, uh, uh, re-emphasize, you know, you know, this point that we do what we do because we understand the need, we understand the responsibility, and we understand the demand that if somebody doesn't stand in the gap, if someone is not, you know, taking that leadership, you know, responsibility, because basically, if you are, if you are, if you are presenting yourself all right to be a person of of prayer all right to be a watchman to be or a, an intercessor you know in the community basically you have you know you've you've placed upon yourself the responsibility of leadership and that is something that many people really do not understand that leadership is not just about you being there out there being visible leadership is about influencing things is about changing things is about you imparting is about you you know uh, uh, bringing people to an awareness even though they might not even know that you are the one you know creating that sense of awareness so we have to understand that the position of prayer amen is a place amen of of leadership influence when we pray amen we we, we allow god to touch to change to transform all right to shift people all right and to and and to redirect all right that you know the, the the course of life all right so so we agree with god and that is basically what we're doing we are agreeing with god god said if i can find one if i can find two if i can find ten in the land for ten i will not destroy the land that is huge god said i'm searching i'm looking for a, a, you know a man to stand in the gap you know this morning i just felt i needed to you know read you know uh, uh the, the 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 scriptures before you know the lord made this you know statement in in uh, uh um in in ezekiel 22 verse 30 where he finally said i search for a man but if you begin to read from verse one of the of you know of, of ezekiel chapter two then you begin to appreciate you know what led god to make that statement and i think uh, um you know at the cost of you know our prayer time i'm not sure i'll be able to finish everything but it 
it gives us a clear understanding of why God is looking for all right, someone to stand, to go on behalf of. And that to me, that is something that is very crucial and, 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 and critical, particularly in this junction, in this season of the nation of South Africa. This is the time where we need to take our eyes all right, off the politicking and the games all right, that is playing out. All right? Even in the parliament, as much as we need to be aware of what is going on there, but we need to really take this battle, all right, to you know to, to you know to the enemies to the enemy's camp we need to we need to understand all right that rhetorics would not change things we need to understand all right that the best of human ideas may not even change things now yesterday i was actually looking at you know uh, uh, um well i i, I listened to um you know a, a clip from you know one of the news uh, stations uh, you know, and uh, it was said that you know two hundred and thirty billion is to be released, you know, for Eskom just to bail out Eskom. Two hundred and thirty billion. So my my brain was just doing some calculation. I, I mean, of, of course, I'm not good in mathematics. So I decided to Google. All right, uh, um, what would be you know the the equivalent of you know. You know, two hundred and thirty billion in U.S. in U.S. dollars, and it comes to about sixteen sixteen billion plus sixteen billion plus U.S. dollars. And I'm saying to myself, I mean, if one one enterprise, one you know enterprise, one one just one state-owned enterprise would take so much money. Can't we actually, you know, rebuild another, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, power plant? Because I mean, I'm I'm asking myself, what what is going on? Well, just one, you know, uh, enterprise is going to take two hundred and thirty billion. That is huge. That is huge. So so my point is is you see there's a lot of effort to try to change things and um we keep pouring money we keep pouring money into into you know you know into this you know a uh, uh, state owned you know enterprises but guess what it's still the same old result we we get it so th there's a need for us to begin to ch think outside the box and change how we view because you see you can have problem problem will always be i mean we like it or not as long as we live here on earth all right as individuals as families as community as a nation we will always have problem we will always have problem because you're, you're dealing with people beyond that you're dealing with issues of wear and tear all right but at where you have one two three people gather with everybody coming with their own idea and their own god knows what at the end of the day there's going to be a problem there's going to be issue because we all don't see the same way we all don't think the same way we all don't you know engage in situation the same way all right so and i mean this is a this is democracy people people are allowed to bring in their own idea and you know people have their own agenda all right there are people right now actually waiting for the economy the nation to collapse because that is where they're going to eat from that is where they're going to make their millions and their god knows what from but guess what if we begin to think outside the box and i think that is what we need because i'm focusing all right what we're dealing with all right I, 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 you know in relating to our nation so, so many things have happened that we cannot afford to repeat those things because if we repeat those things we're going to get the same result we're going to get the same result and this is why we're saying that for us to be able to pray effectively we have to be we have to be informed we have to be informed we have to be we have to understand or right, what the spirit of the lord because information or right, and intelligence is not just about some people coming together and brainstorming as much as that is important but our information and our our skill amen and our ability to prefer solution amen must come from a, a from a dimension from a reality all right that is beyond that which we see all right if if if, if you want to get you know a, a problem resolve okay don't don't look for the same people in the in that same problem to bring the answer you've got to look for answer out of amen the context of the people who are trying to solve that problem or in, in, in the context of the people who in fact who maybe have created the problem you've got to think outside the box and sometimes we've got to do that all right you know it, it may not look Okay, because we're trying to protect, you know, our, you know, our pride and so many things. But it's time we start thinking outside the box. If one, you know, uh, 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 you know, company is going to take 250, excuse me, 230, you know, uh, uh, 
billion rand. I think I think somebody needs to really sit down. I think somebody needs to really begin to ask, you know, some very, you know, uncomfortable questions. All right. And that is just one. We've got several. So so we, we're talking about, you know, restoring, you know, the economy of this nation. We're talking about restoring the dignity of this nation. I think it starts with restoring, amen, our own integrity, restoring our own position, restoring, amen, the caliber of character of, of men and women who are truly able, amen, to, to, to lead us to the place of divine, amen, you know, breakthrough. And I think that is one thing that we need to begin to pray for. This nation needs, amen, a new cream of leaders. This nation needs a new cream of leaders from every sector, amen, starting from our own life, starting from our position as fathers, as mothers in the, in the home, amen, starting from how we teach, how we train our children, the kind of values, amen. I keep saying it, we need to change the value system that drives, amen, our, you know, our objectives, our, you know, our, our projections. We need to change how we think. There has to be something, amen. There has to, something has to happen with the way we think, amen, as a nation. Because if we continue to think in the same box, in the same pattern, all right, we are going to continue to get the same result. We, it, it's, it's, I mean, we, we're not going to get a different result. So, 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 so as, 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 you know, as Christians and as people that are, you know, that believe in the values of biblical truth, amen, we need to go into the word of God. Like I said yesterday, we are the one called to represent, amen. Noah represents, amen, his, his generation. Hallelujah. David represents his generation. The principle of representation, amen, must play out. We have to assume the position of leadership. We have to begin to think, amen, and begin to pray that which the spirit of the Lord, amen, is dropping into our spirit in terms of leadership and governance and the whole order of administrating this nation. We have to begin to pray and say, God, give us the kind of a brain, amen, that will you know that will lead this nation in a in a way or right, that will bring deliverance that will bring healing that will bring restoration and then we take that and begin to inject it into the life amen of those in authority in other words if i'm supposed to be the president of this nation how would i deal with things how would i respond to issues how would i you know you know react to you know to challenges all right when when i receive a download from god i'm praying that into the president i'm praying that into the president i'm asking myself if i'm the person in charge of or uh, 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 you know the situation in terms of governance or uh, in maybe let's say in county or in Johannesburg uh, you, you know Pretoria somewhere or uh, and I'm asking God these are the problem these are the situation there is Alex problem there you know there is lack of you know uh, uh, water there is you know you know a uh, uh, lack of quality education so you're praying you're asking the Lord give me the download give me or uh, the vision give me because the truth is the truth is I mean there was a situation there was a challenge in the the land of Egypt, in the land of Babylon, guess the people that God used to change things around. They were Christians, not people from them. Amen. The Bible says all the magicians, all the you know, uh, 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 the philosophers, all the skillful men, all the you know, scientists, amen, of of Babylon could not just, amen. I mean, all the astrologers could not just give, amen. The king, you know, show the king his interpretation. In fact, not just interpretation, tell him the dream because the, the Nebuchadnezzar could not remember the dream. All right. So, 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 so here are people in captivity. God is speaking to them, and God is. I mean, they said, "Oh, king, please, please." Don't destroy everybody. Don't kill everybody. Allow us to just go consult our God. I want you to understand that God, amen, takes interest, amen, in the in the in the political, in the economy, amen, of a of a nation. In fact, the Lord says, seek the peace of the land, amen. To seek the peace of a nation, amen, is to seek the prosperity of the nation. Because the Bible says, in their peace, you will find peace. All right. In their prosperity, you will find prosperity. And this is a strong point that I have, you know, I have taken, you know for many years in terms of you know uh, uh, praying for for nations i mean and god has given me the you know the kind of a grace and capacity to pray for nations to just you know see into nations and just begin to you know pray and believe the lord amen for a change because somehow i think that is just a gift but what i'm saying this morning is all right if we begin to assume the position of leadership all right i mean joseph joseph was just i mean a, a prisoner he was a prisoner but he had the solution he had the solution why because he had he, he had he, he has god he carried god amen i mean shadrach mission and abednego i mean they were they were they, they were in slavery i mean they were under bondage but guess what their spirit the spirit amen was alive 
life the spirit was not in bondage and i think that is an important thing and, and, and that takes me back to what i am saying that we've been talking about for a while now we need a new quality amen of of kingdom centered men and women all right it, it, it doesn't matter who they are, where they are. No, no, no. We just need people that are well resourced by the Spirit because it is them that God is going to begin to use and impart amen, His grace upon. Because if indeed we are carriers of the presence of God, we are carriers of light, we are carriers of truth. Guess what? That light, that truth, that life of God in us is translated into answer, into solution, amen, into, into innovations, hallelujah, into creativity. You've got to understand, amen, that the presence of God in our life is not just to make us feel mm, I feel the presence of God. No, that presence, hallelujah, is translated into solution. As much as the presence of God, amen, brings us to a place of, of reverence, amen. We, we, we honor God, we reverence Him, and, and we are able to worship Him and we feel, you know, through the night, I kept thinking about the presence of God. I kept, and, you know, yesterday night, I'm not sure if anybody has seen it, I, I posted something on my timeline, you know, I was listening to, uh, you know, to somebody preach and the word came to my spirit. If we want the presence of God, then we have to daily make ourselves present in the presence of God. I mean, if you are not availing yourself, if you're not availing yourself, how can you be a carrier of the presence of God? And I'm getting, beginning to get hot. If you are not a carrier, amen. Excuse me. If you are not, if you are not availing yourself, if you are not daily availing yourself, if you are not daily, amen, coming, if you are not daily desiring, amen, the presence of God, how can you have? How can you carry the presence? I, I hope you understand what I'm saying this morning. All right. So the, your availability, your presenting yourself daily, amen gives you the opportunity amen to be poured into because the presence of god can be poured into us yes god reside in us yes yes we are the we are the residents of god we are the we are the rest you know the the, the the resident of god but guess what we got to have that like 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 us attitude all right the bible talk about like us attitude in the book of romans he said present yourself amen like all right you've, you've got to understand that god amen will not do anything in our life amen if there is no sense of passion, if there's no sense of pursuance, if there's no sense of hunger, the Bible says we must daily come before Him, amen. We must daily present ourselves. So, the more you present yourself, like this morning, now you've presented yourself. Guess what? You are listening, all right. You you you, you become a, 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 a custodian of this truth. Why? Because you've presented yourself. If you don't present yourself, you're not gonna hear, you're not gonna listen to what I'm talking about. Maybe later you watch it, but but then it's not gonna be like you presenting yourself because there is a transference, there is an Impartation that is taking place. All right, when 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 we have this kind of you know connection, this is beyond just you know live streaming. There is a connection. You know, I was thinking about you know a lady that you know I, I just love her spirit. I mean, and and we we connect on you know on you know on on, on Facebook. And you know, for months now, I've not, I've not spoken to her. We have not chatted, all right. But guess what? It's like daily, my spirit is just connected to this lady. There's something about her, all right, that that I know God is, God is, God, is, God has used to steer my spirit. And I know there's something about my spirit that God has used to steer our spirit up because that's how God works. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking about something this morning that you know, many of the things that we call ministry before God is actually the process of. Preparing preparing us for the ministry all right a lot of people i might say oh i've been in ministry for god knows he you know 10 years 15 years but truly what you call ministry is actually a process of training you you think you're in ministry but god says sorry you have not even started ministry yet i'm just training you i'm just bringing these people into your life to prepare you particularly for those who are in, you know who are in the pastoral ministry i remember that god used god said to me all right i've taken you through these seasons of pastoring all right to prepare you for that which I have ordained you for. So sometimes we make the mistake out of ignorance. That, oh, I've been in ministry. I mean, I could remember it was Kenneth Hagin that said, you know, uh, uh, he's been in ministry for 15 years. And, you know, if you read that book, Plan, Purpose, and Pursuit. And, and the Lord one day said to him, uh, Kenneth Hagin, so when, when are you going to start the ministry that I've called you into? 
And he's like, excuse me, Lord, but I've been in ministry all these years. God says, sorry, no, you were never in ministry. You're only going through training. Now you need to start. So, so we can, we can, we can find ourselves in that situation where we think, oh, yes, I, I, you know, I'm ready. And the point that I'm making is God will bring people, you know, into our life. God will connect us with people, people that will drop something, people that will impart something, people that will take something out of us. All right. Just to prepare us for that which heaven has ordained us for. You may never know that the ministry God has prepared you for that. He has taken you through, you know, maybe 500, 1,000 people. You maybe even be pastoring 1,000, 10,000 people. And God has used all that to prepare you for just to meet one person, to impart the life of one person. My good God, when we begin to think like this, you see, our, our ideology about the things of God suddenly begins to change. All right? Our concept about ministry suddenly begins to fall out of the way. And, and I believe all that I'm saying, you see, you've got, to, you've got to tag with me. Because sometimes when I'm speaking, I just touch dimensions and, and all kinds of things, but they all culminate. They all come together. So I'm thinking about this lady, and the, and the Lord said, just, you know, pray a word. Just pray a word into our life. All right? Just connect with her in the spirit, you know, because we are in a day or a where we are connecting spirit to spirit. All right, we've got to understand that the relationship heaven is preparing us for or is, is bringing us into their relationship beyond just sight. All right, they are relationships that are born by the spirit. All right, because there are, there are things God wants to pour into you through somebody that He's connected you with. All right, sudden relationship or right, that has died. Okay, maybe in the past 10 15 years, suddenly God awakens that thing again because there is something. God needed, amen, to complete, to perfect because of that which, amen, he has designed and ordained you for. Now, we've got to understand these, these are all part of the principle of preparing us, amen, for that which God, you know, not too long ago, the Lord said to me, Isaiah, you've entered another you know another another season of your assignment you know for this nation and i could feel that i know that all right because of the kind of things the lord is saying to me and the kind of people god is connecting and reconnecting me with all right so, so I'm, I'm very aware all right that we are we are the we are the we are at the turning point all right we we are the brink of a new day something is about to happen but we have to mount our position we have to take our place on the wall and we have to stop looking at ourselves all right because when the word came to Gideon, almighty man of war, he's looking around. Who are you talking to? The angel says, you. Don't you understand what, what God has been doing in your life? Don't you understand that all that you've been through, amen, you've been prepared for this season, even though you were not aware of it, all that, amen, you have been, you have, you have been, you have, you have, you have gone through, all that has taken place in your life, amen, is to prepare you for this day, all right? Sometimes when our day comes, when our season comes, we, we hardly know that we're ready, amen? I mean, it's just like David. David never knew that a day, time was going to come where he would face Goliath. He was never prepared for, you know, to fight a Goliath. He was never prepared amen, for fighting, you know, some giant. No, but he had learned to fight a bear. He had learned to, you know, fight in a lion. All right? he, he had learned the ways of God. He had learned amen, what it means to lead sheep. He had learned so many things in the wilderness without anybody knowing it. And in fact, without him knowing that he was being prepared for something greater. He didn't know. He didn't know. So providence fell upon him. His father said, come, you take a bread, you take a cheese, you take some milk, go to your brother, go give to them. All right. They are at the, you know, at the, at the battlefront. You just go do this. Guess what? Heaven had prepared him. So it is not about, you know, who we think we are. It is not about what we think we have achieved. It's about the workings of God in us. Hallelujah. It's about the work. Because you see, when you allow God to perfect what he's perfecting in you, when you allow God to seal what, he, what he's sealing in you, a day, an occasion will come. Providence will come. Amen. Sh season will shift. All right, and you will be sent to take cheese and bread. God knows. Oh my love. Oh shayada. You will be asked to take to take cheese and bread to some God knows who. All right, brainstorming in some in some boardroom, talking about how to how to shift things, how to do things. You know, for the city, for the nation, for community. Suddenly you are there. All right, you are just a waiter, and and you 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 is drop on what they are saying, and you like. But you guys don't understand. I've got a solution. This is the answer. And they're like, who are you? I'm just uh, a waiter. I'm just a waiter. I'm nobody. 
I'm nobody. I'm just, you know, a shepherd boy. I'm just a prisoner. They say, go fetch him. We've got to understand that heaven, amen, is preparing us. Heaven is about to set us up. But are we ready? This is the point. This, I believe this is the direction, amen. The Lord, amen, is leading us this morning. We've got to understand that the present voice of God for this moment, for this season, amen, is that, amen, heaven wants you and I to be ready, to be prepared. Because indeed a day, a time will come, the king will send for you. And if you're not ready, you are going to miss out of your season. This is the voice of the watchman. This is the sight of the watchman. We've got to understand this thing. That our prayer, amen, is not just to engage heaven, but our prayer also prepares us. That's why I said one of the best places to get trained is in the place of prayer. Because as, as you begin to pray, heaven begins to highlight things in your life. I, I, have you gone to that kind of a prayer way after finish praying you just feel god help me oh lord help me help me help me and you just start crying and you, you know my son asked me some time ago he said he said he said uh, uh, daddy why is it that when you pray sometimes you cry and i looked at him i said well because one i feel the presence of god i'm overwhelmed by the presence of god but secondly i feel ashamed of who i am before god that i've not lived up to stand it he said, okay, okay. And the reason for that, all right, when we feel things like that, is for us to understand that heaven is working in us. Heaven is working in us. Heaven is perfecting us for something we may not even know. But guess what? When that day comes, you will realize, you will find out that you've been prepared. I mean, I've walked into places, just walking into places without just, without knowing, without preparing. And suddenly, I realized that God needed me to be there just to bring solution and re direction to people. Just like that. Just like that. So, so we've got to understand that what God is demanding in this day, amen, is a quality of people. And I'm saying this even on the level, amen, of governance in the marketplace. Governance, hallelujah. Even in, in the political terrain, amen. That you may just find yourself, you're not a politician, but you may just find yourself among certain influential people, all right, that are just talking and they're doing their own thing. And, and, you, and you're listening and, and you say, excuse me, can, can I just, can I suggest something? Can I, can I say something? And I say, okay, go ahead. And what you say carries the day. And what you say just carries the day like that. Come on, friends. We've got to begin to press in. You, you, people may not even understand what we're talking about, what we're dealing with. But I know one thing, amen. If God is going to change, amen, a people, a society, God is going to use a quality, amen, a caliber of people, hallelujah, that have reflected the same courage, amen, the, the same character, the same value system of, of, you know, of the icons in the word of God, amen. God will never in our, in our generation, in our our time hallelujah reduce the standard hallelujah that all these great heroes um, amen met amen when you look at the life of abram you look at the life of joseph you look at look at the life of enoch you look at the life of of enos you look at the, the like the, the life of of david of daniel and all these men and all these powerful women esther ruth deborah you know abigail you know elizabeth you look at all these people there, there's something different about them there is something i mean heaven came to a community scanning suddenly there was a there was you know there was a lady they say her name is Ruth um, excuse me her name is Mary they say you found favor in the sight of God there was something about Mary hallelujah that attracted God amen to make her amen a portal to make her a vessel a carrier of the seed that would transform generation there was something that God found hallelujah in, in, in Noah that God said okay in you I'm going to deposit the capacity for redemption of the next generation there was something God found a passion God found amen in, in the in the life, in the life of you know uh, Enoch, that he walked with God to the point the Bible says, "All right, I'm gonna literally take you out of the earth." I mean, this guy stepped out of mortality into immortality. They couldn't find him. You couldn't trace, amen, the burial ground of Enoch. God took him out of the earth. The same thing with Moses, amen. This man died. Till today, nobody knew where Moses was buried. You've got to, we've got to come to a point in our walk with God that we are not settling for average. If God is going to change this nation, and I tell you something, the nations have not changed, all right? When you read about nations in the Bible, the same challenge those nations faces are the same challenges that we are facing today, amen. When you, when you 
you read the scripture and talk about nations, the same issue, the same concept of governance, amen. The only thing that, was, that is different is that back then, amen, it is more like, you know, autocracy and, you know, a monarch kind of leadership. Today we call it, you know, democracy, but guess what? It is the same heart. It is the same concept. It is the same belief system, amen, that people have. We may call it democracy, but guess what? You, you still have somebody somewhere making the shot, calling the shot, making the decision, all right? You may say, well, it, 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 you know, a democracy is, you know, is, is you know, a, a the philosophy of the people governed by the people ruled by the people we know that is not true we know that is not true we know that is not true come on so we've got to begin to understand amen that only god can influence the heart of a man and when god touches the heart of a man amen the man will be looking for the right person the man will be looking for i mean when 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 joseph finally interpreted the dream amen of 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 of, of pharaoh what did pharaoh say Pharaoh said, who else can do the job? Who else can do the job better than you? You go ahead. He says, nobody in the land will be higher than you except me. I mean, Joseph became a prime minister. Was he prepared for prime minister? Do you think one day he had it in his mind? Yes, he had a dream that amen, he saw his brother. He saw his brother and his father and his mother bowing to him. He never saw Egypt bowing to him. Read the scripture. Joseph never saw Egypt bowing to him. He saw his brothers, amen, and his mothers, his family bowing to him. Jo David never, excuse me, Joseph never knew that one day, hallelujah, he will be in Egypt where that scripture will be fulfilled. You see the point? There was, there's no place in the scripture that said that, Mo, that you know, that Joseph saw Egypt bowing, that Pharaoh bowing to him, that all the prince, uh, all, you know, all the wise men, amen, of, of, you know, of, 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 of Egypt were bowing. He never saw that. He only saw the stars and the moon bowing to him. But guess what? God brought him. God took him through seasons of preparing. Because you see, every one of us carries something unique. We carry a dream. We carry something bigger than us. You know, we have been limited by our environment. We have been limited by our community. We have been limited by where we grew up. We have been limited all right, by where we were born. We have been limited by our tribe. We've been limited, amen, by our language. We've been limited by, you know, our education well you see i never went to university i never had all that all the things that you thought amen will qualify you to be you know to be somebody out there amen god says i don't need that because when i call you i qualify you i train you i prepare you and god will take you through season he will take you through situation he will take you through circumstance earlier that will make you amen a solution and an answer because see what the world is looking for is a solution and an answer the world is not looking for the best brainy the world is not looking for somebody who is so smart god God, the world is looking for somebody who's got the answer who's got the answer so sometimes god will take you through so many things amen just to bypass certain qualification to make you qualify for what he has prepared you for i want to ask you which school did jesus went which university that jesus went and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not downplaying please know this i'm not downplaying the power of education if somebody know me very well i mean i i stand and i advocate in fact i am an advocate for education but guess what i also understand that the education of this world is limited in power is limited in creativity is limited in resource amen to solve the complex problems of men it's limited we've got to be educated by the spirit you think you think if i have the opportunity right now if somebody said oh uh you know i need to take you to somebody somewhere and uh but, but we're not going to tell you and suddenly i found myself in pretoria and i found myself in the presidency you think i will mumble worse you think i will not know what to say you think i will not know what to say to the president or to any minister that you know accord me that you know seeks my audience you think i will be like mm, no no i know what to say i know what to tell them i know amen the kind of advice to give amen because amen this is something heaven you see you're a leader you're a leader where nobody sees you where you seem to have no one following you before you are positioned amen in the place where you particularly particularly begin to lead people if you're not a leader hallelujah you know but by, by by leading yourself by following the values the principles the integrity amen of of, of the word of god amen you're never gonna be a leader when you're, you've got ten thousand or five thousand or you know five hundred people around you no 
a leader is not designed by the follower. A leader is designed by his own personal administration of value system. We've got to understand that what heaven is looking for. This is the reason why when you give people position, they fumble, they make, they, I mean, they've learned all the education, they've got all the qualification. I mean, you look at some of the people that have, that have ruined ESCOM. I mean, these are people who have, I mean, they've got degrees. They've got God knows what. I mean, they've, they've, they've studied here. They've studied there. Many of them will go overseas for training. All right. But what what has happened that all of them could not manage? Then, then, then you begin to realize that this is beyond just their capacity. There is, there is a greater force. There's a thought force. There's something else all right, that these people do not have. And that is what amen, we need to look for in our day. Because I tell you, no matter the knowledge, no matter the understanding that these people may think they have, they cannot resolve. Because the battle of this nation is not just the battle of electricity. It's not just the battle of economy. It's a battle of the soul of this nation. And we've got to position ourselves earlier that we take amen, our, our position amen, in, in, in changing, amen, in redirecting the narrative of this nation. Because there, I, mean, tell you, I tell you, there are forces out there that don't want this nation earlier to, to be united, to stand, amen, to prosper. And we've got to be able to identify them. But be, the only way we can do that is when we begin to mount our place on the wall, when we begin to position ourselves on the rampart, when we begin to hallelujah, call upon the name of the Lord. When we begin to go on behalf of the land, on behalf of the city, on behalf of the people, when we begin to believe God earlier for insight, for clarity, for understanding, when we begin to see ourselves the way God sees us, I tell you, you are a solution to the transformation, to the development, to the impartation, and to the acceleration of amen, this nation. And like I've been saying for a while, the economy of this nation will be restored when the economy of God, hallelujah, is restored back to the people. When we when we take back, amen. When we when we bring back, hallelujah, the the, the 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 presence of God. When we restore the ark of God, you see, within the con- concept, like I've said earlier, within the concept, amen, of the presence of God, a technology that deals with every area of human life. You see, the Bible says it is the will of God, amen, that that we prosper even as our soul prosper. That impacts, amen, our society also. Amen. God wants to prosper our society, but amen, it's not going to happen at the detriment, at the neglect, amen, of our place, of our position. We have to have a nation, amen, that is calling upon the name of God. We have to have a nation, amen, that is not just using God. We have to call upon the name of God and we have to seek, amen, and pray for a nation, amen, that really understand the need for God in their life. I mean, I was trying to, you know, I read the book of Ezekiel 22. You know what led God to make that statement in in in, in chapter 30, 30 when he says I I look for a man among them who will build up the wall and stand before me. The problem is we have no men standing before God. <laughs> we have men that are going before God to collect something, but we don't have men standing before God. You know, it's when we learn to stand before him that that then then we begin to learn to hear his heart. It's when we begin to learn to hear his mind. When we begin to learn to understand amen, his thought. He says, he says, my thought for you. I mean, the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Let this thought be in you. If, if, we, if we don't have people who have a standing, like I was sh- you know, sharing earlier, if we're not presenting ourselves before the presence of God, how do we become carriers of his presence? How do you know somebody if you are not availing yourself, amen, to the person? It's not, it's not going to happen. We've got to come to a point where God is saying, I'm looking, I'm searching. And we're gonna, we, we, we should be able to say, Lord, I'm the man. I'm presenting myself this day. But look, let's look at some of the things that led God to bring, to make this statement. I'm going to read, hallelujah, I'm going to read Ezekiel 22. Then the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, will you judge her? Will you judge this city of bloodshed? Then confront her with all a detestable practice and ways. And excuse me, and say, This is what the sovereign law says, O city that brings herself doom by, by shedding blood in a mist and, 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 and defiles herself by making idols. You have become guilty. You have become guilty because of the blood you have shed and have become defiled by the idols you have made. You have brought you, you, you have brought uh, uh, your, your days to a close and the end of your years has come. Therefore, I will make you an object of scorn. 
to the nations and 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 a laugh and a laughing stock to all the all the countries those who are near and those who are far away will mock you O infamous city full of turmoil verse 6 see how each of these princes talking about their leaders now see how see how each of these princes of Israel who are in your in, who are in you in, in uses of power excuse me see how each of this see how each of these princes of, of, of Israel who are in uses of his power shed blood in you they have treated fathers and mothers with contempt listen to this it says in in you that is in them they have treated fathers and mothers in contempt in you they have oppressed aliens and mistreated the fatherless and widows you have despised my holy thing and des desecrated my sabbath you are you are slanderous men bent on shedding blood in you there are those who eat who eat at the mountains at the mountain shrines and commit new acts in you are those who dishonor their fathers their father's bed in you are those who violated uh, uh, women during their period when they are ceremonially unclean in you one man commits a detestable offense with his neighbor's wife another sh uh, another sh shamefully shamefully defiles his his, his daughter-in-law now god is expressing all the iniquity that is in the land of israel that is carried out by a priest let me take uh, 11 again in you that's in you that's the nation or the city in you one man commits a detestable offense with his neighbor's wife another shamefully defile his daughter's in-law my word another violates his sister his own father's daughter in you men attempt bribe excuse me in you men accept bribe to shed blood You take usury and an excessive interest and make unjust gain from your neighbor by extortion. And you have forgotten me, declares the sovereign law. Now, uh, let me stop here. This is, this is verse 13. This is, I'm going to stop in verse 13. So, so you begin to see, I'm not sure because uh, the, the, the network went off. I'm not sure if you heard, you know, some of the things that we were reading. I mean, the detestable act that is being practiced by the city, by this, by the, by the nation of Israel committed by, all right, by their leaders, their princes. Now, the, 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 the challenge here is when you have this kind of atrocity, when you have this kind of, you know, loot some act, when you have this kind of wickedness, all right, that is being committed, all right, by a people within a city. God says, I'm going to bring judgment because that's the first thing God says. He said, will you not judge this city? This city of bloodshed. Are you not going to judge this city? I mean, God is speaking to Ezekiel. Are you not going? He said, if you're going to do that, then this is what you need to do. Declare to her that you have committed all this evil. You've committed all this atrocity. Now, the point here is, the point here is, if we have this kind of, I mean, some of the things that we have highlighted basically are things that we know that are taking place all right, in our city, in our nation, in our land. These are, these are some of the reflections all right, that you know, we are dealing with as challenge, as individual, as city, as a society. Now, if we want God to move on our behalf, if we want God all right, to bring us to a position all right, of deliverance and healing, then we have to begin to address amen, these issues. We have to begin to deal with amen, this concept of 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 you know of of immorality all right that has almost destroyed the values that have almost destroyed the very core the you know the very fabric i mean of 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 the, of the society so we have to be able to stand and believe the lord amen to help us to begin to deal with this issue We've got to believe god to help us it says in you i mean you have defiled the land you have corrupted you know the people you have you know you have forgotten me this is what the lord is saying so if we are going to because people can begin to say all right yes we've got to deal with the issues of you know of the economy we've got to deal with all but everything boils down to this wrong value system that have been established in the land 
that have been established in the land guilt there is bloodshed all right there is iniquity all right there is destruction there is defilement there is bribery all right that there, there is you know i mean then you begin to look at the moral things he says see how each of your princes see how each of the princes of, of israel uses their power all right to shed blood they use their power to shed blood it says in you you have treated fathers and mothers with contempt no honor no respect he said but how does how does that translate to you know uh, the economy like i keep saying the problem of our of our nation is not just the economy all right there's a reason why the economy amen is not diving there's a reason why the economy is is at the point of of you know of low amen there's a reason for that and that can be connected amen to the the, the moral you know a reality amen of the of, of of the land that can be related amen to the condition that we have accepted to the kind of lifestyle that we have accepted he said in you you detest fathers and mothers you, you reject, all right. You know, you 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 destroy, you 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 know, you persecute the fatherless, all right. You know, the foreigners in your land, all right. You 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 abuse them, you misuse them. I mean, this is what God is saying. He says, your, your princes, they use they use their power to shed blood. He says, in you, you you have you have you have mistreated the fathers and the and, you know and the mothers. You have oppressed aliens and mistreated them. I mean, this is this is this is a principle. So, if we begin to look at the kind of policy and the kind of lifestyle and the kind of belief system and the kind of you know uh, uh, ideologies that we have imbibed, that speaks directly into all right the the you know the the, the state of the economy. Because if we begin to change this, this kind of quality of ungodly lifestyle that we see, guess what? Then we begin to have people who walk in honor, who walk in truth, who walk in faithfulness, who walk in respect, dignity. All that is translated to productivity. This is what I keep saying. All right, That the church can enhance amen, the, 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 the productivity amen, of society. Because when we begin to speak on morality, we begin to speak on truth, we begin to speak on justice, we begin to speak speak on integrity we we'll begin to speak things amen that deals with honor respect amen dignity in labor we we'll begin to empower communities cities society amen in terms of how they need to live how they need to walk in honor husband respecting their wife wife respecting amen their husband you know we, we begin to talk about you know love and peace and harmony in community guess what that enhances individuals amen to be creative to be developed the reason why people are not you know i mean you talk about not getting job you talk about all this thing connect it most time is because those people's mindset those people's life amen has been captured by the enemy by the devil amen they say uh, you know uh, 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 an idle mind is the devil's workshop i mean that's a good that's a that's a good you know what because if if your mind is idle you you, you you you're not you're not you know you you know you're not objective in terms of being creative and you know doing what is right guess what the enemy is going to hijack your mind and then you begin to think of how to go steal how to go break into you know your neighbor's house all that amen speaks into the falling of the economy because i mean if 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 you destroy somebody's life and home and and the person can no longer go to work and all that guess what it affects the economy and that's why we've got to look at the position of the church amen standing for truth as as an enhancer of the economy as an enhancer because what i'm doing i mean if you translate what i am doing right now i mean government should be saying wow we've got somebody talking about the truth we need to pay this man all right just to enhance just to encourage amen society to be you know to be to be awake amen to be empowered and truly you know government thought about that years back that oh the church will, the church can help us to transform society and they give church a lot of money all right and what did they do they start building buildings they start doing their own things suddenly all right the, the the prophets and and the priests like the scripture says they use what they have to oppress the people i'm sure government have realized and said we made a mistake and they start giving churches money I mean, this is what happened. I mean, I remember when I came to South Africa, I heard the government actually, you know, give money to silent churches. Because naturally, all right, when you have people that are standing for truth and standing for God and praying and encouraging communities and society, I mean, they should be encouraged. But you see, our men of God, they abused it. So we have to begin to pray that God will enhance 
enable us and, and give us amen, the kind of wisdom and capacity to retake amen, a position of influence. We're not seeking for influence, no. We're not seeking for it. But when we begin to exhibit the spirit of leadership, we cannot but to be recognized, to be identified. All right, Let's not do it to be recognized, to be seen. But let's just continue to pray and believe God and allow God to speak into our life and give us amen, the kind of quality of lifestyle amen, that will help us transform our community and if we do that i can assure you somebody will notice that somebody will begin to speak and because guess what if you're a teller of dream if you're an interpreter of dream it's only a matter of time before somebody says i heard that you can interpret dream. could you interpret my yes i can all right before you know it you are interpreting the dream amen of of leaders out there so father we thank you this morning as your spirit continue to minister to us about your demand and desire for this day that you're looking for a new quality of men and women oh god in our city in as you paint a picture of a corrupt city corrupt leadership corrupt you know society yet your word declares that you sought for a man among this perversion and wickedness and corruption your word says you found none but we say father this is a reflection of the days that we live in we see oh god corruption oppression we see oh god a situation where all kinds of evil yes is being practiced in the name of freedom but we say this day lord that you will not look down and say you have not found any but lord that you will find us oh god we we, we stand this day oh god as vessels oh god that, that are mounting yes lord the walls that are mounting the ramp oh declare in the name of jesus oh god that we stand on behalf of our city we stand on behalf of our nation we stand this day and we say father have mercy on us we pray in the name of jesus have mercy on our land we stand in the name of jesus as moses as abraham lord stood in the gap as 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 Job stood in the gap on behalf of his family. We stand in the gap this morning, oh God. You say, you will make mention of the Lord. Give yourself no rest. Father, this day, we go, we stand on behalf of our nation. We ask you, Lord, to help us. Give us, oh God, wisdom, knowledge, direction, capacity, grace, the spirit of leadership. Yes, oh God, to go out there. Just let our life impact and transform the people around that when they see us, they will see us as true leaders, oh God. Yes, because the issue is the people will look at those who we think or who they think have this and have that and you know have this influence and have that influence but we know they are not the true leaders we know that we know that they, they they've done all kinds of things to get that position to buy that position just to impoverish the people just to control just to own the people just to manipulate the people just to, to skin the people but we pray this day father the lord as you begin to change guards at the gate as you begin to change guards at the gate oh god father may you begin to recognize and see those who are faithful those who have been committed oh god in seeking you in pursuing your ways in standing for truth oh god yes those who are not searching looking for leadership position but you have found them worthy to be leaders oh god yes like you said david i pick you you know among the sheep i pick you among the sheep to lead my people father help us oh god not to discard the days among the sheep not to discard the time where we need to be with the sheep oh god because it's from there oh god that you're gonna pick us to go fight the giant it's it's from there, oh God, that you're going to pick us, oh God, yes, to lead a nation to war. It's from there, oh God, that you're going to proclaim and declare that, yes, you have called us to lead the nation. Father, I thank you this day, oh God, that as your spirit begins to awaken a new quality of leaders, yes, to govern, to lead, to administrate this nation, that we will not see what is happening out there, that we will not be moved by the by the wind that is blowing out there. We will not be moved by the rhetorics, oh God, in politics. We will not, oh God, play politics with the things of the spirit help us to understand where we have been positioned help us to know where we have been positioned help us to know that we are yes at that at that position of advantage oh god yes to see what you're saying to hear what you say because you said you sought for a man yes to stand before you on behalf of the land father this day we take our place we take our stand we stand before you and we ask father guide us lead us teach us impart oh god the spirit of truth in us give us boldness courage and understanding not to bow the knees oh god even when it seems as if we are standing alone help us to always know that we are not alone help us 
us to always know that you're always there even when we feel we are alone help us to know father that we are not a lonely voice help us to know yes that there are voice of angels there are voice of many waters around us father help us to hear your voice help us to feel your assurance help us to stand for what is true help us to stand for what is right help us to take that discretion help us to take oh god yes that position of leading in the name of jesus father help us empower us and us no one goes oh god to war by his own power by his own ability no for we know almighty god you are the one that resource us yes the day that we live in requires oh god that we are resource that we are empower grant us sight oh god grant us grace oh god undress us and redress us oh god yes father we receive a new yes gear for advancing for going forth for proclaiming for declaring your intentions in the name of jesus we proclaim that we are prophetic oh god we are prophetic in our orientation we are prophetic in our mindset we are prophetic in our engagement we are prophetic almighty god in our in our connection in the name of jesus father we thank you this day oh father we will rise god we will rise up we will go forth to god we will proclaim we will declare we will represent your intention in the name of jesus father we thank you lord and as your spirit begins to grow in us as your spirit begins to develop in us lord our minds as we walk through, yes, the day, our minds, oh God, will begin to transform the sphere, our thoughts. Yes, because that is where the battle is, is in the mind, is in the thought. In the name of Jesus, that we will not succumb to the lies of the enemy. That we will not give in, oh God, to the spirit, oh God, of manipulation. We will not give in, oh God, to that Jezebel spirit. We will not give in, oh God, to the spirit of Ahab. We will not give in to the lies of the enemy. We will not surrender. We will not bow, oh God, yes, to the spirit of the ateliers of this world. We will not, in the name of Jesus, Jesus bow in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, to Jeroboam in the name of Jesus. We will not bow, oh God, to false God. We will not bow, oh God, to the idols of this world. Father, we thank you that you're empowering us anew in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We go forth in the might of your will, in the might of your grace, in the might of your mercy. We go forth this day. Thank you, Jesus, that you are equipping us anew afresh with mercy. Thank you, Jesus, that you're clothing us, oh God, in humility yet we have boldness oh god like a lion we stand we roar in the name of jesus we proclaim let your kingdom come in into our space into our homes into our family into our ministry we declare newness in jesus name newness in jesus name newness of life newness of vision thank you father for your light that is flooding every area of our life right now thank you for your truth oh god that is lifting us to a new realm a new reality a new dimension of you your intention. We thank you for the capacity of ascendance. Uh, your word declare in that day men shall say come let us go up to the mountain of the lost house. Father we thank you that you are establishing your mountain. You are establishing us in this new day. You are bringing us to a position of divine elevation. Thank you almighty God the men and women are coming. They are trooping. They are streaming up to this place oh God of your glory. We honor you. We bless your name. We glorify you this day that you are doing a new thing. Father, as you remove the old and usher in the new, we proclaim and we declare that we are that which you're ushering in. You're prepare us. You've been preparing us uh, for this new day. And we say that we are able. We are more than able in the name of Jesus. We are able and we are more than able to bring forth your desire. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, for your will that is done, for your name that is exalted, for your kingdom, oh God, that is manifest in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory glory we give you praise we give you honor be glorified be lifted up Yahweh we lift your name on high we declare oh God there's none like you there is none like you there's none like you be glorified father thank you Lord for your presence thank you Lord for your presence thank you for your presence your presence makes a difference in our life your presence makes a difference in our life your presence makes the difference in our community your presence makes the difference in the name of Jesus we honor you we give you glory have your way in our homes in our family have your way in our community have your way in the life of our government have your way have your way have your way take your place in the name of jesus father we thank you for favor this day we thank you for your blessing we thank you for your goodness we thank you oh god yes for that which your spirit is perfecting perfect your ways in us perfect your work in us perfect your desire in us perfect your counsel in us your kingdom come lord your will be done yes in the name of jesus perfect your way perfect your will in us your mercy your goodness your love your goodness your mercy father we thank you I Thank you, God, for everyone this day. 
that has joined this broadcast. I pray grace. I pray strength. I pray new vision, understanding, capacity. I pray tenacity. I pray, oh God, yes, that you will refresh them in the name of Jesus. Lord, where they've been weak, oh God. Father, you will refresh them. You will renew them. You will renew their youth. You will renew their youth, oh God. You will renew their youth in the name of Jesus. I thank you this day. Capacity to advance. Capacity to, to go forth, yes, and become that spokesman in the name of Jesus. Capacity to make a difference influence that Esther had you receive in Jesus name the influence of Esther you will receive it in the marketplace you will go out there and reflect the glory of God in Jesus name father I thank you blessed be your holy name for grace for capacity for wisdom knowledge and understanding thank you for your sevenfold spirit that is at work in the life of your people thank you Lord Jesus this morning hallelujah father we thank you we bring a change we bring a change we bring a change because you have changed us we are instruments of change. We are change agents. We thank you. Honor and glory to you this morning. Honor and glory to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Our Father, we worship you. We bless your name. We love you. With all our hearts, we appreciate you. With all our heart, we appreciate you. Oh, hallelujah. Honor and glory to you. Honor and glory to you. Honor and glory to you, Father. Be glorified. Be worshipped. Be exalted. Be magnified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well come to the end of today's uh, broadcast thank you so much everyone sister tina uh, um, man of god pastor aaron thank you sister myrtle thank you so much for joining this morning may the lord continue to strengthen us may he continue to empower us may he continue to allow us amen to go forth in grace in mercy and in truth may god continue to perfect all that concerns you thank you so much for joining uh we'll hopefully again connect tomorrow god bless you bye bye